Hello students, today we will be discussing about work, power and energy. So what does work, power and energy stand for actually? So, work, power and energy it is. So when we talk about the work, power and energy, work basically is something related to any application of a force and that application when it results into some kind of a motion in the object that basically means that there is change in position of the object there is change in state of the object or it can result into something else as well but that is after the application of the force right so now if you have to understand that so how exactly we are going to understand this let me put it this way let's say that we have a mass over here, this mass has been kept on any surface, right? So let's say we have the mass M over here. This mass has been kept on a surface. So what is going to happen? There are going to be just assume there is not an inclined plane, it's just on a straight plane. So on this there is going to be a weight that will be acting as well as there is a normal reaction. But as you know, these forces are going to cancel out. So these two forces are not going to result into something which is going to produce any work for this. But if I say that I have a force that is being applied and as a result the body gets an acceleration or let me put it this way, that the body gets displaced. So let's assume that this is particularly the distance moved by the body on the application of the force. So when on the application of the force the body moves by a distance there is a D. In that case I can say that the work, let's say DW is some amount of work that is going to be produced when on the application of a constant force the body moves let's say by a distance DX. So DW is the amount of work that is going to be produced when a force F is applied and thereby the body covers a distance dx. Right? So when this is the thing that happens, and if I want to find out the total distance or the total of work that is done, so how do I do it? So this integration will tell me that the total work done is equal to W. So in general, what I will get? I'll get W is equal to integration of f dot dx, right? But one thing to note here is that if I assume that the force is constant, force does not change with the displacement, I can take it out of the empty term. So this will simply be given by f into x. Okay? Now this is an application of the torque product which we have discussed before. So f dot x, f and x both are vector quantities, so this is the dog product, this value is going to be maximum, or the work that is going to be maximum when the force is applied along the same direction as that of the displacement produced. Right? So this is the basic concept of work. Now dimensionally speaking, dimensionally speaking, what exactly are going to be the dimensions of the work? How do you find out the dimensions of work? Work as we saw is equal to f into x dimension if you want to find it so dimension of force is going to be equal to newton and this is going to be a meter let's say let's say system right or newton can further written as kilogram meter per second square that's mass into acceleration and here this is meters so, effectively, what will I get? What will I get as a result? So, this will give me kilogram meter square second angle square. So, this is the dimension of work done in SI system of units. I should be saying not dimension, the units. And this is going to be measured in joules. So kilogram meter square per second square is going to be measured, also said, represented as joules, like we represent the force as Newton. So
So what that is also measured in joules. Okay, so far so good. The next one in this is what is known as the work energy theorem. So what exactly is the work energy theorem? Let me explain that. So work energy theorem. But before I go on to that, let me first tell you what exactly is the difference between work and energy. Work is when you apply a force on an object and the object starts moving with some, some velocity or there is a distinct in this state. Energy, when the work has been done by an external force, that results into a storage of energy. So, work is done by an external system, energy is stored within the body. Okay? For instance, let me tell you, let's say you take a stone to a very high point and then drop it. Why should that come down? From where does that get energy? It comes down because of the stored energy within it. That is, it's the, it's the potential energy that is stored within it because of its height. Right? So once that stone comes down, obviously it would have that much energy to come down. And therefore, once it is at the bottommost point, it will have some velocity. So from where did it get that velocity? It got it from its state, from its state of height. Right? So that is the relation. So let's try to figure out what is, is the relation between the work and the energy. Okay, how to proceed with this? We'll again start off with the same relation. DW is going to be equal to force into displacement. Right? But what is force? Force is going to be written as mass into acceleration into displacement. Right? What is acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but the change in velocity with time into displacement, right? But let me just interchange this. I'll just interchange dt. So what will I get as a result? I can simply write this as m dx divided by dt into dv. Can I say this? Right? But what is dx by dt equals to? What is the value dx by dt equals to? Let me try figuring that out. dx by dt is nothing but the velocity. So the work done is going to be given by m into v dv. Right? And what was this? This is nothing but dw. So now if I just integrate this, stating that the body starts with an initial velocity u and after some time acquires a final velocity v. And on this side, this gives me the total work done. So what will we get as a result? What will we get as a result? So if I just integrate, so I'll take out the mass in common out. Here I'll get V dV integrated between U and V. If I just integrate this, so I'll get M V square over 2 integrated between u and v. Clear? Yeah. So, I can simply write this as half m v square minus half m u square. Right? So, this is what is the work energy theorem. Now, let me tell you more about this. So, what basically does this mean? You can see that half m v square this is the final kinetic energy half m u square this is the initial kinetic energy right so let me now explain you explain to you as to how what exactly is the physical implication of this when you apply an external force on any object right that object that object maybe it was moving with some initial speed u and it would have some kinetic energy because of that. When you are applying the force, obviously there is going to be a change in its velocity. So if that change in velocity results into a new kinetic energy, so this is the new kinetic energy value that you get. Difference in kinetic energy is equal to 
the amount of work that has been put in, right? So when you say that this is the work that has been put in, so this work results into a change in kinetic energy, and that change in kinetic energy is basically the change in energy effectively. So this is what is known as the work energy theory, right? Good. Now, if we go further, if we go further, so what we will get as a result, let me tell you. The next is the conservation of energy.